Hey guys, I've been using the Nikon Z50 for two years now and I really fell in love with this camera. However, there are some minor quirks or bugs that just drive me crazy. They can be super annoying. So I thought it would be a great idea to show you some of these bugs that I really don't like and also show you those things that I really love in the Nikon Z50. First of all, there is the autofocus bug. The autofocus of the Nikon Z50 is pretty good overall. It has a great eye and face detection and it finds the eyes and faces easily and most of the time it's quite accurate. However, it has a really annoying bug. Sometimes it just wouldn't focus on the subject even if the subject is right in front of the lens and fills the frame. Look at this, her face completely fills the frame yet the camera refuses to focus on her, it keeps focusing on the leaves in the background. Why? 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 Sometimes after pressing the shutter button wishlessly for a few seconds, the camera finds the subject finally, but in other times the camera just refuses to focus on the subject. For almost a year I had no idea what this is, then I saw a video by many Ortiz where he explained this phenomenon. So this autofocus bug only happens when the background is bright and the camera already found the focus on the background. In this case, if the subject is darker, no matter how close the subject comes to the camera, the camera will not refocus on the subject. And as far as I know, every other Nikon Z camera have this bug as well. Probably they have solved this in the Nikon Z9, hopefully. Unfortunately, this autofocus bug also happens when recording a video. Just look at how the camera refused to focus on my face here. The only workaround for this is if you quickly manually override the focus by rotating the focus ring or if you tap on the screen to activate the follow focus function. But in any case, you will lose precious seconds. With firmware update 2.1, this problem has not been solved. For people who are recording themselves on video, the lack of a flip out screen is a major issue. I really wish if I could see myself right now, but I have no idea if the camera is recording or not. I have no idea if, if the audio levels are good because I cannot see the camera screen. Don't tell anyone, but it happened to me once that I recorded an interview and it turned out after seven minutes that I forgot to press the record button so I didn't record anything. This could have been avoided if I could have seen myself on the flip out screen or if you press the record button maybe. Although the Z50 has a screen that can be tilted 180 degrees down so in theory I can see myself but this has no real use other than taking selfies because I cannot put the camera onto a tripod in this position. Simply because the tripod head will block the screen. Plus only a special tripod plate is thin enough that it doesn't block the screen. 
Although I listed the lack of flip out screen a disadvantage, I have to tell you that when I'm taking photos and when I'm behind the camera, I actually prefer this style of, of screen mechanism because it's very easy to pull it upwards or push it downwards. And also it's a lot less vulnerable than the classical flip out designs. The third not so light thing connects here. Once you flip down the screen, the camera enters the so-called selfie mode. Here it will wait two seconds after pressing the shutter button. Once the selfie is done, it will show you the photo for a few seconds, but afterwards you cannot play back the photos as long as the screen is flipped down. So you have to flip the screen back and then you are able to see the photo, which just doesn't make any sense for me. Compression artifacts on camera display. You may have noticed that I love to take night photos and by the way, I am organizing night photography tours in Budapest, Hungary. So you are very welcome to join me on such a tour. Just follow the link under the video. So in low key night photos, when I magnify into the frame, the photo I see there is compressed as hell. And mostly at the dark areas, you just cannot see any detail because of the compression artifacts. But on the computer, once they are imported into Lightroom, the photos are fine and all the details are there and the compression artifacts are gone. I suspect that Nikon is applying heavy compression on the embedded JPEG photos in the Nikon RAW files. Well, this isn't a big thing, but for some scenes, it can make uh, checking the focus a lot harder. Let me jump in here real quick. YouTube tells me that only 5% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel, which is insanely low. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and also help me out by clicking the like button and that's gonna push the video forward in the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. The timeless bug. This is something I just cannot wrap my head around. The Z50 has two different built-in timeless programs. One of them gives you the individual photos and you have to stitch them together. And the other one gives you only the video without the single frames. In both timeless photography modes, you can tell how long the interval should be and how many shots it should take. Let's say I want two seconds interval and take 99 shots with an exposure time of 10 seconds because it's a night scene. And here comes the part that I don't understand. As you can see, the camera stops taking photos after a dozen or 20 shots, although there is still plenty of space on the memory card. And the same thing happened on the Nikon Z5 as well. Now this is really, really annoying because it makes impossible to record Milky Way time lapses, and especially because the Nikon Z50 does not have a port for external remote controllers. So I don't know what the solution is. I've looked it up at many places, but I, I just couldn't find a solution for this. If you know how to overcome this, please let me know in the comments. Self timer setting gets forgotten. As a night photographer, I use the self timer a lot and I really like how it can be customized. You can select if it should wait 2, 5, 10 or 20 seconds and you can set how many frames it should take. But, and but, and this is a big thing, even if the camera is turned on, but if the camera goes into idle, then the camera forgets the self timer mode and jumps back to single shooting mode which is so annoying. Why does it have to forget the self timer mode? Why does it have to jump back to single drive mode? I just don't understand. By the way, as far as I know, all other Nikon Z cameras forget about self timer and also all um, entry and mid-level Nikon DSLRs forget the self timer setting once you turn them on off or once they go to idle and then go back on. Now let's see the things that I really love in the Nikon Z50. First of all, there are the kit lenses. You can see that the kit lenses are weak in terms of aperture, 
but in every other aspect they are really good. The 16 to 50 mm kit lens is super small and lightweight and its sharpness is surprisingly good. But my favorite is the 50 to 250 mm lens. It's really light and can be compressed into a small size. The image stabilization is excellent and allows me to shoot photos like this handheld. The sharpness is also excellent, that's why I always recommend people to buy the package with both kit lenses. Dynamic range. I already pointed out in my review that the sensor in the Nikon Z50 has an excellent dynamic range, meaning that you can really push the shadow areas up without extensive noise. This is perfect for sunset scenes or when taking night photos of cities, so I can just expose for the highlights and push up the shadows in Lightroom. So basically you don't have to take an HDR sequence, you can just underexpose a bit and push the shadows back up. HDMI output. As somebody who makes tutorials and often records the, the camera's screen, this is something that I love. So if I plug in an HDMI recorder and I record what the camera sees, I can still see what's happening in the viewfinder. So even with the HDMI recorder attached and working, the viewfinder and the camera's display are still active. For example, this is what I saw when shooting a horse racing event. On Canon and Sony cameras, once the HDMI recorder is plugged in, you cannot see anything in the viewfinder or on the display, which is really annoying. If you are a normal photographer, you will not care about this one, but if you are somebody who makes tutorials on how to use cameras, this is a huge plus. Camera body design and ergonomics. The Z50 feels like a real camera in my hands and it's great that it has a big electronic viewfinder right in the middle at the right place. This is just so much better than what you see on, for example, the Sony A6000 models where the viewfinder is really small and it's on the very edge of the camera body. I also like how the buttons are laid out and that the exposure compensation and ISO speed have dedicated buttons and also there are two customizable buttons next to the lens mount. Also, the touchscreen is really usable and you can use the touchscreen in the menu system as well. And when you are playing back the photos, you can easily magnify into them by double tapping. That is extremely useful. Different setup for photo and video mode. As someone who regularly switches between photo and video mode, Having a totally different and independent setup for photography and videography is a lifesaver. So the settings in photo and video mode are completely independent from each other. For example, if I'm shooting a sport event, I would like to use a very fast shutter speed to freeze the subjects. But when I'm taking videos, I would like to have a lot slower shutter speed so I can have smooth motion on my footage you want to keep the shutter speed around 1 50th of a second if you are shooting in 24 fps. On top of that, the eye menu of the photo and video mode are totally independent and you can customize both of them in the menu. Obviously, there are many features that can be only active in video mode, so the different eye menus absolutely make sense. For example, here is how I configured my eye menu for video mode on the Nikon Z50. You can see that there are many video only specific items here that I often change when recording videos. Believe me, having a custom configured eye menu for both photo and video mode is a huge time saver. As far as I know, Sony cameras also have different quick menus for photo and video but Canons miss this option, which I just don't understand. So guys, these were the things that I really love in the Nikon C50 and the ones that 
they just really annoy me. I hope you like this video and please subscribe to my channel so we'll, you will not miss any of my new content. And also please hit the like button so hopefully it's gonna help out the video in the YouTube algorithm. See you soon and all the best to you from Hungary.